Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's discussion we're going to go over using the Falcon 12 and this will apply to the GR18 as well as the GR24 Pro if you have one of those. A lot of the things we can talk about today will apply to any of those. So uh, I'm going to fit this on a helicopter and set it up and uh, hopefully do a little flying with it when I'm done. But uh, initially let's go over the setup for the Falcon 12 or the GR18 if you would. These these flight controllers have the ability to be used on helicopters, planes and quadcopters but you have to load the correct firmware on it. So I will uh, show you how to load the firmware on it in a separate video. I'll put a link in here and just make sure you have the right firmware loaded for your specific flight controller. You can typically see the designated nation for that when you go and look at telemetry view when you look at the telemetry view, you, you'll see a in front of the version number and I'll show you that on the radio once I get to that part. Hooking up the, the Falcon 12 or the GR18. So if we have the right firmware, you can hook this up, make sure that you you mount that, that flight controller perfectly straight, either in this or turn it 90 degrees if you so inclined, but uh, you don't want it sitting at a, at a diagonal across. Okay, then we go ahead and hook up the servos. Channel 1 is left front servo, so your left roll servo goes in channel 1. Channel 2 is the right roll servo, so that's the one that's uh, in the other side. Actually on, on this heli, my left and right ones are actually right next to each other. I keep on tapping my elevator servo. This is channel 3, that is the elevator servo, so that goes in there. And then channel four is hooked up to to my uh, I don't know if you can see that there on the screen. That is my uh, my tail servo or rudder, if you like. So that's one, two, three, and four. And then channel six on this one is used to drive your motor, so you or your ESC. So you want to go to your ESC with with that channel. If you have a uh, Graupner ESC, you could probably plug in your uh, telemetry plug on channel 5 there. I currently don't have a uh, T35 that I can use on here. So that's all there is to uh, to hooking up the, the actual receiver on, on the helicopter. Okay, we've made it to the radio. So we're going to set up our new helicopter. I'm going to go to model, click anywhere on one of those numbers, plus. We'll just call it anything. I'm just going to do test. We can choose our helicopter. Gotta leave this at one servo. Any any of the flight controllers that we use today, the, all the mixing is done in the flight controller, not on the radio. And for that reason, you use your swa leave your swash plate at one servo. The throttle, I'm gonna leave at default because uh, that's where my minimum is at the front and max at the rear. I'm gonna leave the linear swash plate enabled, but I am gonna go and disable throttle limit. You can turn on throttle hold later. I don't like throttle limit, so by default I turn that off. Uh, I advise you do the same thing. All right, so there we go. Created a new model, and it'll load up here in just a second. So uh, now that we have a new model created, the first thing, of course, that we want to do is to go and bind our, uh, yes, as you can see, I don't have a receiver hooked up. So we're gonna go into the RF set menu with the Falcon 12, there is no button on it. And the way to bind it is to actually go and turn it on. And you gotta wait like 15 seconds before you try and bind it. If you do it before the 15 seconds, your binding process is gonna fail um, because there is no button. Oh. So I just managed to make it into the 15 seconds there, but as soon as I did, it uh, it bound, and now we have control over that. You can hit telemetry in two ways. You can do it through a button that was set up on the touch screen, or you can use the hard button on the right, that little circle over there. Up here, you can see the firmware revision that's currently loaded on here. I have 2.00. .00. That's the latest I have. I don't know if it is the latest. If you had quadcopter 
uh, firmware installed in here, it would have said Q something, Q05, Q, I think is the latest that, no, Q06 is the latest for the Falcon. So you don't want that if you want to fly a helicopter, but um, for the for this Falcon, and I notice I'm out of date, I just quickly looked it up. This should be 205. So I'll do a, a quick update when I'm done here going through the setup and I might actually throw that on the video as well, showing you how I, I do the update for, for the firmware. Model type, since we're a helicopter, we have that. If you're putting this on a plane, hit enter, change it to a plane and you're good to go. Alarm voltage, since we typically feed five volts via BEC into here, 3.8 is correct and you wanna leave it at that. If you have a separate battery pack that has different voltage, of course you wanna change that. Alarm temperature, that's the internal temperature of the Falcon. And you can see that by the way in, in the telemetry menus, but yeah, this is the alarm that you can set up for that. Period, we're not gonna use this because that is controlled differently in, in the actual heli setup. And I'll show you where you choose the, the frequency on that. If you have a different set of servos connected for whatever reason else that you wanna control, you can change this between 10 and 20 milliseconds, 10 being digital and 20 being analog. Some DA channel five, I don't have need for you, but if you do have that, you can enable it. If you wanna to talk to another flight controller, for instance, you'll turn that on. Or you can use channel five for a sensor, which is currently what I have selected. Unfortunately, I don't have the T35 yet, but when I get it, that'll come in here and I'll be able to see the telemetry of that. All right, that's the base menu, nothing fancy, nothing weird. We're gonna go past these first ones for now. You'll be coming back and doing a lot of changes on this this video i'm not really going to go into tuning the helicopter for uh, or the gyros for that matter that'll be covered in a different thing as for the default should work okay initially but uh this is where you come and change that the tail for sure you'll come in and make some adjustments to try and make it a bit more stable anyway you want to be at the base setup the first time around and in here we do a couple of things um, to set up the helicopter make sure at least the basics work correctly rotating direction is the the main blades which direction they spin typically right but you can go left if you do need to do that swash blade type since i have three servos on this one and they're equidistant from each other that's 120 degree swash plate and that's the one that i need you can change that to to any other type of swash plates out there to, to accommodate that. Swash plate frequency, remember we talked about that uh, 10 versus 20 millisecond. This is where you set up the, the servos. If you have digital servos and really good ones, you wanna put them to 200 Hertz here for control frequency. If, you, if they're not that good, lower values, or if they're analog, you wanna leave them at 50 Hertz, FYI. You don't wanna go higher because you'll burn them out. Swash plate direction. You can change the, the way that the, the roller nick operates on the swash plate. Um, so if you move your, your stick, right stick on a Mo2 radio and the swash plate moves in the wrong direction, you can try and play with these numbers between zero and seven to find one that works for you. In my case, I couldn't find one that works for me. So I went into the actual servo setup and did reverses there. I'll show you how to do that too. It's just a quick FYI. Elevator trim. Very important. So at this point in time, you probably want to take off the, the head and use a uh, whatever measurement tool you have to make sure that your swash plate is level. Um, so I'm not going to go into those details here. There's plenty of videos online on how to level a swash plate. The, the point here is though, you can go into this settings and do some trimming. Again, really important to really do this stuff on board the mechanic helicopter mechanically the best you can. Elevator trim. An elevator trim, as soon as you engage elevator trim, your servos for all three actually of these servos will go to neutral position. And so you elevator trim. As soon as I hit enter on elevator trim, your servos connected to your swash plate will all go to neutral position and uh, then that allows you to zero out or make sure that your, uh, your swash plate is level. So there's all kinds of tools and all kinds of videos out there that shows you how to go in 
and uh, level out your swash plate. I'm not going to go into details, but here you can come in and do that final little trims to help you get it exactly level. And this is true for both elevator and aileron trim. As soon as you hit either one of those, all of all three of those servos in my case will go to to neutral, and you can do the the proper leveling. Collective trim. This is where you put your your stick in the center position, well, on a 3D heli at least, and uh, you trim out collective to be absolutely zero or just slightly negative, depending on who you talk to. But uh, I'll, I'll suggest make it zero at this point in time. You can always get negative in a different way. Th so that's collective trim, basically zeroing out where your zero pitch is when your sticks is in neutral position. Swash plate travel eight degrees. Now this one, according to the manual, is super important. And when you hit this value again, when I hit enter here, it will go and turn my swash plate to give me eight degree travel on it. So again, you have your head on, you have your uh, digital gauge on there and now you should tune this adjust this value till you get eight degrees on your digital gauge collective a this is where i adjust the travel for my my pitch so um it's basically setting up endpoints for for your left stick if you have a mode, mode 2 radio i got all the way, way down to my stick pull back all the way down then i get 80 if i push my stick all the way up i get the b value coming in and i set that value up so i can adjust those travels for uh, positive and negative on there so that's what collective a slash b is swash plate limit this is to set up the the travel limit that you have on your swash plate you uh you don't want to get a mechanical bind you can use this to tune out your value from your flight controllers to not hit that mechanical trim. Swash plate rotate for uh, one or for two or three blade helis leave this at zero. When you have more blades, there's a way to to adjust the angle or degree on on your swash plate. I am not going to touch on this one. That's a little above my pay grade to go into detail here. Tail servo is actually a thousand five hundred, right? So. This is the neutral position of your tail servo. If you have a tail servo that does not neutral or go to center position at 1,500, then you wouldn't want to change this value to match whatever that is. Um, so that's where you can tune it. Typically your, uh, your standard off the shelf servo is at 1,500. Tail frequency, again, same as uh, the frequency for, for the swash plate, this is the one for your tail. Normally you have a higher frequency uh, servo connected to your tail blades, and this is where you set that. Again, if you have an analog and really, really don't recommend that, you wanna have a lower value in there. Tail center. So to set up your tail, again, do this mechanically first off. You don't wanna mess too much with trimming because this is really what this is gonna do is give you some trim. When I hit this enter here, it'll take the output to my tail servo and you put in neutral and now I can go and adjust that mechanical center on on the tail tail blades to make sure that they're perfectly at zero degrees when at center or neutral so uh, this is just to help you with that get that mechanical setting done tail limit a and b again that's that travel so if I move my left stick mode two again um, you can see how it changes between A and B when I go left or right. This is to adjust that endpoint travel to prevent you from hitting that mechanical travel or limits again. Logging, enable the amount of logging that you want on the helicopter. I am gonna leave it a default. It's good to have that. Expert mode, I am not gonna go in expert mode. I am not an expert. Uh, but when you do enable this, this enables a few more settings in some of the other menus that we just passed for you to go and tweak that some more. Um, again, I was never going to go into those menus in detail anyway, so I'm going to leave expert mode at no at this point in time. All right, now we get to a super important 
menu and that's the last one menu on the if you keep on going right and that is the axis assignment since you just mounted that flight controller on your helicopter the radio has no idea what orientation you mounted it in remember i said you can do it um, 90 degrees this way 90 degrees that way as long as it's 90 degree uh, increments you can mount it any which way you like um, and this menu tells it it tells the radio how that gyro is mounted and as well as setting the gyro corrections up correctly on the flight controller okay so um you hit enter on here and say do setup and when you do that change that to yes and press enter this will now say okay i am now in setup mode roll that is the right stick mode too you push that stick all the way to the right and you will see that I now have a highlight on there. And to make that highlight go away, you take your helicopter, your flight, oops, sorry, I just kicked my, and you roll the helicopter to the right. Then we go to Nick, Nick is again that right stick on mode 2 all the way forward and I rotate my helicopter all the way forward so I tilt it actually past 45 degrees forward and that'll set up that field and then tail my left stick I moved it all the way to the right and highlights and now I rotate my helicopter clockwise until that turns and goes away so now I have set up my gyro on on the helicopter to to know which way it was orientated and mounted so that's that's the final setup that you really need to do before you can can actually turn anything on and and, and not crash as soon as you put power on your motor to fly this you can come back in here do some some tuning setup of sensitivity in the tail highly recommended when things wag and as yes, you come back here and set that up they use expo settings in here as opposed to on the radio itself and to come in and adjust it i have tried it either way i don't see much of a difference as a matter of fact on the main one i i prefer to to uh do the expo uh, directly on the radio um, if somebody else has a different recommendation here feel free to go into the comments and leave me a note on that um, like i said i i just find it easier to go on the radio and tune my expo and set up my exact way that i want it to look as opposed to leaving it to the flight controller um, that might just be me whether that's 100 percent right or not i don't know but anyway that's all uh, there is to this setup for the falcon